Hey, hey everybody, welcome to uh, another chat session uh, in 2021. Actually, our first one, I think, in 2020. No, I think I did one last month. I did an informal one last month. So this is our second one for 2021, but first one for February. So anyways, welcome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Ken Robbins, the CEO of Millie. Um, I've obviously talked to most of you as Agent Intel subscribers. So uh, yeah, we're really excited to start doing these series again. We're gonna hoping to kick more and more of these off as the, uh, as the year goes on. So I'm just doing some admin stuff here. I'm making sure I'm actually up and live and you guys can actually see me and hear me. Um, for those you don't know, typically, like I never do these things without the help of Kelly. Uh, and mm -hmm. Kelly is not around today to help. So I'm literally like flying solo. So we're gonna see how it goes. Um, she hopefully will come in and check a couple times to make sure everything's okay and make sure we're doing well. Um, but yeah, just a couple of admin things before we get started, uh, and, and I'll bring Alyssa on and we'll chat with her for a little bit. But So first of all, hopefully you guys have seen some of my notes that I've sent out in the last uh, week or so. So first, all your branded content has been updated. Uh, we got a great new uh, brander who's been uh, doing our workforce, Gabe, uh, who uh, you guys don't see behind the scenes. But he's been working on updating your files. So if you log in and go into your files in the Google Drive, all of your content should be updated. Uh, with the newest uh, guide that was available that you've requested. So what I always ask is take a look in there. If you're, if you're, you know, you've changed brokerages or you got a new address or something, go ahead and submit another branded content request and we will adjust those and put the new brand and new content on there. And obviously if there's a guide you haven't seen uh, or a guide you want that you haven't branded yet, request that, we can do that. Um, I'm also happy to tell you that we are working on a whole slew of new base guides. Uh, we've got about 45 on the list. Um, we've just brought on a, a team, a uh, writer, graphic designer, so you'll, you'll be seeing from them. So Claire Wood and Josie Depew are our new writer, graphic designer. Claire, uh, you guys, um, again, behind the scenes, Claire does a lot of, she writes a lot of the blogs for your blog site. So, so you, you're familiar with her writing style, but she's also working on now writing a lot of those base guides and doing the research on those. And then Josie will be doing the graphic design and putting those together. And like I said, we have about 45 bases we're working on. Uh, I'll share the list at some point here in the in the very near future, just so you get a sense of which ones those are. Um, the first one I think we're working on is um, uh, it's a, a base in Northern Virginia, I, it, or excuse me, Northern California um, that we we we're starting with, and we're kind of working through a list of them. So we'll be sharing with those obviously with you uh, in the near future. So and also if the blog sites, if you have not requested your blog site, please do so. We've been updating those and doing a lot of great things with them. So this, uh, again, it's part of your membership. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, and then last, you saw probably my note about the economy. So, you know, love to have a discussion with any of you about that, but there's some economic conditions and kind of what's going on for 2021. And then I'll be sharing some stuff about BAH shortly uh, and how the government accounting office is looking at how they do BAH rates for the military. But that's enough housekeeping for today. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna bring on our guests. So I'd like to introduce everybody to Alyssa. So Alyssa, welcome. Thank you. It's great to see you. So for those of you that don't know Alyssa, Alyssa is a, a real estate agent um, down in Virginia Beach, correct? Yes. Yeah, so she's been uh, an Agent Intel subscriber, I guess, pretty much from the beginning, right? You've been a subscriber with us for a couple of years now, I think. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, so just tell us a little bit about yourself, Alyssa. Like, where are you from? Uh, kind of your background and everything. Sure. So, I'm from Pensacola originally. Um, so, grew up in a you know jet town, and now live in Virginia Beach, which is like the other major you know jet area too. But um, I started subscribing to Millie when um, we bought a house here in Virginia Beach, and our agent basically like. She was amazing, but she talked me into getting into real estate and um, I had never considered it before. That's how I got started. And she didn't have any military affiliation and obviously I did. So Millie was a really good way for me to, you know, kind of teach, I don't want to say teach her a couple of things, but you know, here she is training me on real estate and then we have access to this like entire other base of people who need help that are PCSing. And, you know, she didn't really have any other systems in place for that besides the normal you know, resale. So I, my license just turned three this year and I think I've been with y'all for two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So three, so three, you've been an agent now for three years, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I, I mean, the life of agents is kind of <laughs> a long time actually. Which is right. So, you know, the lifespan of most agents, I think is most agents are out of the business within a couple of years. 
Um, yeah. You know, if, if they don't have success kind of coming out of the gate. And then, uh, so, so three years is kind of like a big, that's a big kind of threshold. So give us a sense of like your trajectory of when you started, uh, kind of how you got launched and, 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 you know, kind of how business started off for you and like kind of how you've grown over the last three years. Cause we so have, I, I, and I want to preface that cause we have a lot of agents on here that are newer, maybe okay. new to the business. So I think they, they benefit from just hearing kind of like, what was your experience when you started as an agent? For sure. So I did it a little bit of an unusual way for that first broker. I was actually her admin for about nine months. So I was, you know, taking the classes, waiting for my license to come back and all of that. But I was, you know, writing PICRAs, practicing with her every day, you know, doing all of her Zillow callbacks, getting hung up on like the not fun stuff. Right. But, you know, I got but to go to every great learning. Like you learned yeah. every little aspect about the business though. Yeah, and I went to every inspection and every showing and just, you know, learned a lot of things that I feel like you can't learn, obviously, real, in real estate school. So I think that was super helpful. Um, and really after that, I think the main way that I've had success in real estate is just being myself and not trying to push people or be, you know, very salesy. I feel like you can't actually sell someone a house, but you can protect them while they're buying a house and facilitate the transaction. And, you know, that's kind of where the base guides and stuff came in for me too. like people PCSing and buying a house they've never seen. You know, I don't want them just to take my word for what a neighborhood's like or, you know, what a good part of town is or bad part. Things we can't say as an agent that this base guide can give them the situational awareness that we can't. So, so, so that's pretty fascinating. So you started off kind of ad, doing admin and kind of learning the ropes, which is, I think, really probably valuable because you got to see like all the stuff involved with being an agent. Sure. I think oftentimes new agents, especially they're attracted by the, you know, I always like to say it's like the, the HGTV, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I get to show people houses all day and it's wonderful and it's great. And it's like, yeah, but it's not really fun at nine, 10 o'clock at night when you got to write contracts yeah. and you got to write negotiate and all this other, like, and then all the other stuff that is involved with it. Um, so like, so give us a, so your first year, like mm -hmm. what was kind of like, what was your kind of mindset as you started off in your first like year as a licensed agent? Like, what were you trying to, what were you trying to achieve or what do you hope to achieve? Yeah. You know, everyone, every broker always will sit down with you at the beginning of the year and ask like what your goals are for that year. And mine has always been like a number of transactions, not like a dollar amount really. So my first year, my goal was to close one house a month. And, you know, I started in March of that year and, you know how it is. Some months you close a few, some months, you know, you might skip one. But I think I did about $2 million in sales that year. And so my goal for the next year was to, you know, double it and then same each year. Um, and so far, I've done that. Yeah. And what, so give it like, what, how, how was last year? Give, give it last year was amazing. Um, just under $8 million, I think, is what I ended up with, um, which is, I mean, surprise i think that's great i was really happy i mean i'm not gonna lie in july i like cried a couple times it was so busy feel very fortunate we have almost eight thousand agents in the market that i'm in um it's just extremely saturated and really competitive so i feel like i've been really fortunate for that's, sure. i mean that's that's pretty i mean it's, i think it's amazing like eight million dollars in transactions you know, so first of all, when folks talk about transaction amounts, like it's all relative, right? It's relative to where you are, what home prices are and everything. Um, so, so like, that's one thing I always tell agents out there is like, when you see people talking about their numbers, you got to put that in, in context of what your market is, because that might right. be very different for your market, depending on what the average sales price is. But I know for, the, for your market, right? Like that's a really good number. That's a, like, so how many transactions did that like basically equate to? I was just going to say, I'm going to look on my home snap app because yeah. I'm really bad about keeping up with my own numbers because I'm yeah, my wife to... does it all the time too. She has her app open all the time. Yeah, I'm like so. stalking myself online. Um, but so in the last 24 months, I had six listings, 32 buyers, and the average sale price was 340,000 for listings and so 250 for buyers. That's amazing. So that's so over the arc of three years, you've basically gone from a rookie agent to being you know, what I would consider to be like a top producer in the sense that if you look at like national trends and averages, right? I mean, an agent that's doing 25 or more transactions in a year, is like a full-time high performing agent. And that's, and they're not, that's not most agents, right? Most agents fall well below that number. 
Um, right. So, 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 so obviously one of the, uh, you know, and, and you're a military spouse, right? So yes. talk a little bit about like your mindset as a military spouse and how were you were approaching going after the military market uh, and thinking about that? Cause I'm sure that's, you know, what would you say? What's like, what is the percentage of your business you think this military or veterans compared to? Uh, I mean, over 90. I mean, Hampton Roads specifically, we have Naval Station Norfolk here, which is the biggest installation in the entire country. And we have like seven or eight bases all in this seven city area that, you know, for all intents and purposes, gets treated as one place. Um, so for us, I mean, we're kind of in this weird little bubble. We're affected by what's happening everywhere else. But unless the Navy gets canceled, we just have this constant influx of military buyers. So definitely every brokerage, every lender here aggressively market to the military. So um, as much as I like to say, you know, I felt like I had this, you know, in with the community, the truth is almost every, I don't want to say almost every agent, but I mean, everyone's a military spouse agent wise here. So, you know, the spouse page groups on Facebook here was kind of how I first started getting clients that were military. Um, if you comment in one of the Hampton Roads pages that you're moving, I'm not exaggerating. You get like 80 to 100 real estate agents within an hour um, messaging you or asking you to be their agent. So what I've kind of done. Right? Is, I mean, that's completely overwhelming as a, as a military person yeah. moving, right? Because you don't know how to respond. It's too many folks kind of paying right. you. It's really hard to break through in that, right? Right. And so it's really cool that we all have clients who, you know, care enough to like tag us in these posts too and recommend us, but you have to find some way to provide value because the truth is everybody in that group is a military spouse and a real estate agent. So, you know, what can you do differently that they're not? So I found, you know, the base guides or if everyone seems to ignore the renters. So if you still send a base guide to a renter, I mean, I, I know rentals don't really pay very much, but I a lot of my referrals this year have been from renters that I hooked up with like a Millie Scout or sent the base guide to. So um, I think that's, I yeah. mean, so that's, there's so many, I think, awesome lessons in there. And it's interesting you're talking about renters because, you know, my wife, who's a military spouse agent, who's now been doing this for about seven or eight years. So she, but she was just like you, right? Military spouse starting off and, her first year, I think she did like 25 rentals uh, and, and, and nobody else in the office wanted them. She's like, give me every rental client. And, you know, about four or five of those turned into buyers the following year. And that was kind of the launch pad she used. So, you know, yeah. I always tell agents, don't be afraid if, you know, that's a great way to like, again, build relationships and meet new potential because renters become buyers, right? I mean, they, I mean, everybody kind of starts off renting usually and then right. you know, graduates to buying a home and, what a great way to like make connections and, and, and help people. So, yeah, an agent at my brokerage, she's done, and I could be misquoting this, but Carrie, she started with the same year that I did at a different brokerage and just kind of exclusively did rentals for that first year. And I think she did like 14 million this last year or 13 or something crazy. I mean, and all of her, it was all from a year later. So her business just blew up because all of these renters were so, A, so grateful because no one wanted to help them, you know, in the yeah. first place. And B, then, you know, they got acclimated with the area and decided to buy. So, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's, uh, I think that's a great way to start and get kind of your feet wet and get busy. Yeah. So, you know, you were talking a little bit about the guides. So, so I'm curious, like, so how, when you saw what we were offering, like you were like, I, the reason I love talking to you today is because you were one of the, not only one of the first ones that signed up, but I think you, you understood the power in how to use the guides more than a, like a lot of other agents we had did early on. Um, so I, you know, maybe talk about that a little bit, like when you first saw them, like why you signed up, but then more importantly, like what, how did you think about how are you going to use these in, in your marketing efforts, especially, you know, to the military community, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. So for me personally, the base guides are where I find the most value. I mean, I think all everything you guys have is awesome. Um, I like the infographic, you know, in the blog stuff that you can use for social media. But for me, in this area, as I said, we're seven cities that are all connected by bridges and tunnels. It's very confusing. And, you know, as the crow flies from Virginia Beach to Portsmouth should be 30 minutes, but it's often like an hour and a half or more. So what really stood out to me was your guys, the map and this like breakdown of commute times because you know, people PCSing from California are like, oh, you know, 
I want to live in Portsmouth because it's right there by Naval Station Norfolk, but you really don't want to unless you want to be stuck in that tunnel all day, every day, you know? So that to me had huge value. I've lived in San Diego and I thought the same thing when I looked at the San Diego guide, you know, if you don't know better and you're stationed at North Island, you know, you're not really sure where to live. Corn out is expensive. I, I just thought that it wasn't, you know, BS. Like the things that you guys were saying were true. I mean, you could tell I've lived in these places and the neighborhoods you recommended and the way that you described the school districts and all of that. I, I agreed with it. I experienced it myself. So um, what's fascinating is earlier you said, you know, like you were like, hey, this is a great way for me to like say to somebody, don't take my word for it. Like, look at this. Um, yeah. And what's interesting is, you know, like the things we're telling them in the guides, right? They're not things you don't already know and you couldn't tell no. them yourself, right? You know all this stuff and you know it better than we do because you live there and you work there every day. But like, I mean, how often would you start a conversation where you would have to explain a lot of those things to a new potential client? And then you get another client would call you the next day and you'd have to do the same thing again. Yeah. The same thing right. again. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that, that's what I tell agents. The biggest value is like, we're not telling them things you don't already know. We're we're accelerating the conversation for you so that they're gonna, you know, these guys are gonna help answer a lot of those questions. And so then you can really help start to pinpoint like their real needs and start, you know, the goal, let's be honest, the goal is to move them down your funnel and get them closer and closer to buying, right? So you don't wanna be having to have two and three hour phone conversations two and three times a week with the same client right. again and again and again. Uh, telling them the same things you want to be able to start to get them kind of refined and where you want them to go uh, and exactly. help them make make those decisions right yeah exactly and you know for them it's an overwhelming amount of information I mean we all know PCSing is just like a whirlwind of stuff getting thrown at you so I think having that you know once we get to the point of like FaceTime and phone conversations them having the guide to reference after that too is super helpful because you know too much information and you know i've taken what you guys did and just sort of added to it myself like i'll have pricing information for the daycares here and like know which ones except nacra and don't so like you guys just have a super solid foundation and i felt like it was really accurate and then as i started noticing i was getting asked the same questions by everybody i just kind of started like making a little yeah, that's a great one too. Like, so what we, I would tell folks is we get, we're giving you like the 30,000 foot level view, but like mm -hmm. things like, that's a great one. Pricing at daycares. That's not something we could pot. I mean, we could go probably find it, but that would take us forever to find that for every community and every area. That's, right. that's a great ad, right? That's, that's adding more about, so you're like not only taking what we have, but you're building onto it and adding more things that are even like more helpful. Um, right. which is great. Like that's, that's a great way to think about it. So when you, so give us an example of like, okay, you get a, you get a new client that reaches out or somebody reaches out to you. How do you like, how do you deliver the guide to them? What do you say to them when you give it to them? And you know, kind of what, what do you communicate to them in terms of the expectations? So typically, you know, especially like Facebook is just the easiest example, right? So if like a client tags me or recommends me on Facebook and that person reaches out over messenger, even if they don't, I'll just message them and say like, hey, I know you're getting blown up by like 80,000 real estate agents right now, but like if you're still interviewing agents, I'd love to be considered. And you know, even if you've already found someone, like this will really help you with your situational awareness. Cause you know, they, their original post, they've asked a question, like what right. schools are good, things that a real estate agent, we can't say anyways, you know? Yeah. So that really helps us there. And so I just think it, a lot of times when people message me back, they're like, thank you for not spamming me with just like your bio. Like at that point, they don't really care about my life story, you know? And I think salespeople in general, we can tend, we're a personality type. And you know, here I am talking about myself a lot, but we can tend no, to be no, a little- I, 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 We want you to, that's why you're here. Like, that's great. I mean, yes. look, I, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's funny you say that because I'm thinking of a, a story like about a year or so ago, I remember, there was somebody in, in one of those Facebook groups that was asking a question about a certain area. Um, and, you know, not only were they getting like, you know, overwhelmed with like comments and stuff, but it's hilarious how like the comments started to turn into like, you know, telling him what he should do. So he asked a very simple question about like, uh, about a base and like somebody started saying, well, why are you moving there? You shouldn't move there. That's horrible for your wife's career and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it was like, and finally, like about 10 threads later, I just came in and said, hey, here's a 
here's the guide, like here's a link to our site and, and that area, you know, hopefully he's like, yeah, this was like what I was looking for like an hour ago and the rest of you basically, you know, thanks for nothing. Like I didn't need all your, so, so it's like, I love the way that you just said you, you just kind of, you deliver it to them and just say, Hey, take a look at this. If you think it's helpful, great. I'd love to work with you. And oh, by the name, there's my name and my email and my phone number. Right. You can you can reach back out, and it, it's a great just kind of like lead behind, right? Like that that they have, um, and you just said like they've already gotten value because they feel like they've been completely overwhelmed with, you know, pick me, pick me. I want to be your agent. I want to be your agent. Right. And that we know doesn't work well, right? I mean, that's yeah, not exactly. How react. Yeah, at that point, nobody cares that you've sold ten million dollars in real estate that year. They don't even know where they want to live, like what city, you know, it's just kind of like doing it in the wrong order, I think. So um, the brokerage I work at now is, is better owned, and our broker's amazing that way. Like he's really just all about like doing right thing and not, you know, trying to sell people. Like sometimes it sounds weird, but the better thing is not to sell someone a house. And so I think if you just really come from like a place, you know, where you're focused on doing the right thing and not necessarily sales pitching all the time, um, it works out in the end. Everyone. For those of you just join us, we're talking to Alyssa Ray. Alyssa Ray is a, a rock star agent down in Virginia Beach, uh, military spouse, uh, has been an AI subscriber since pretty much our founding. Uh, and she's just talking a little bit about how she uses some of the material that we, we have effectively as part of her marketing. Um, if you guys want, I put it a link in the, the thing. You're welcome to come on camera and ask us a question. If you're camera shy and don't want to do that, you can post. Uh, and we'll answer some questions there. We're just going to kind of keep talking about marketing a little bit today and, and different marketing ideas. William, thanks for the question. I did see, uh, do you anticipate a normal, a heavy, normal, slow PCS season with a pandemic? I'd love to get your thoughts on that, Alyssa. What are you thinking or what are you hearing from folks on what's so, going to happen this year? Because uh, obviously just to set the, the, the t like last year was a very, very abnormal year, right? There were PCS moves came to a halt. Uh, most people that were going to move, a lot of people didn't move. If they did move, it was later in the year, but way down from what the average is. So what are you seeing or hearing, you know, is going to happen in 2021? You know, honestly, when the pandemic first happened, I was like, well, you know, real estate was fun. I guess I'm going to like apply for a job at Target now. Like I really thought that we were going to be like out of the job, you know, with that like stop movement order. But it it never slowed down here. I mean, it honestly, maybe for that first month, but then everybody – you know, just kind of came as a rush later in the year. So we're, it never, typically our PCS season, you know, was like March to June, but really the whole winter was insane. I mean, I was telling Ken, y'all, like Saturday I wrote an offer for someone where we were one of 10 offers, you know, waived a home inspection for, you know, for information only, full price, no closing costs offered to let them rent the house back for three months and we still didn't get it. I mean, so PCS season here just never really stopped. I think it's just how we live now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I look, I, I don't think William's here, you know, I, I think it's going to continue. It's going to probably pick up yeah. this year. Folks that did get delayed are going to move probably this year at some point. Uh, I think it's going to depend a lot on how quick the vaccinations obviously go, but, but keep right. in mind, like the military, at least the active duty population, some of them are getting vaccinated already. Yep. Uh, and so, and then some of their family members are too. So I suspect that we're going to see PCS moves kind of get back to normal levels um, and maybe yeah. pick up. And then you combine that with the fact that we've got all time historic, like low interest rates on home, right. right? Military folks are even more competitive for buying right now because they can afford to with these low interest rates. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're not being impacted as much, you know, from the, the, the economic conditions and things going on. Uh, because right. lost his job. So, all right, we're going to welcome in another guest. Let's see if we can do this. Bill, oh, it's Bill, it's William. Bill Hernandez. Bill, welcome in. Got I got a question back. you want to ask for Alyssa? Hey, Bill. We're on live. Can you see us? All right, I'm going to put him back in the waiting room just for a second to make sure his camera's working. Um, so, can I, back to the yeah. conversation about the, uh, about the, oh, you there? Bill, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can hear you. I just didn't want to hear the, the, the reverb is going back and forth. All right, we're going to welcome you. Do you have a question? Uh, I, uh, no, uh, my question you is... On your computer first, after okay, can you hear me uh, without the reverb? Yep, we got you. Okay, so um, uh, congratulations, Alyssa. Uh, sounds like you're doing a great job down there. Uh, so it's, uh, back to the... 
Oh, you there? You got to turn your computer. Yeah, I can hear you. I just didn't want to hear you. The, the reverb. Yeah, your, your feedback from the computer is coming into the, there you go. You can hear us now. All right, he's going to try again. Hey, so let's talk, I mean, so so you you hit him with the base guide early. That's that's really good. Um, and then sort of how do you like, so when they call you after that, kind of what what is your kind of questions after reading through the base guide and like, what do they want to know in addition to that? Um, my very first thing, and I think we're probably all thinking the same thing, is um, pre-approval. You know, I mean, I know that we all think we have the best lender, but I swear Carrie Williams at Atlantic Bay is the best lender on the planet, and I will stand by that. But she, you know, typically people are like, hey, I went online to Navy Fed, or, you know, that's where we all feel comfortable with usually. And, you know, so the next step that I tell them is like, you know, don't go running your credit a bunch of times, but I do think, you know, just like you should interview agents, interview lenders, like compare, take what maybe Fed gave you and bring it to someone else and see what they can do. You know, everyone's going to sell your loan anyway, take maybe Fed, but you know, and I just talk about how that's a way to make your offer more competitive. That doesn't cost you money. And, right. you know, especially in a really competitive market, if you've got a local loan officer who can pick up the phone and call the other agent, I mean, that's huge. So, you know, that's, Typically, the my lender next is a big one, obviously, because they they're looking to you because they don't have a lender yet, and that's pretty yeah. standard in the industry, right? Most folks yeah. look to their realtor to introduce them to a lender, um, right. and it's interesting. I think most most realtors take the same approach you do, which is, hey, it, here's a couple different names, call them, see which one's the best, uh, right. you know, see which one you like. Uh, here's one I use a lot, and obviously, you're not you don't get anything in return because the way that exactly. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's really, I think that's super helpful. I'm curious, like, so one of the things we talked about before is how often have you seen the guy get passed from the client you gave it to, to somebody like, so you get a random call out of nowhere and somebody said, I got your base guy. And you're like, I didn't give that to you. Where'd you get that from? Um, well, I have a couple people that were renters that I had helped that are, you know, really cool about that. Like they're just really sweet and like in a lot of the like mom you know, spouse pages on Facebook and they're always just, you know, trying to help people out. And so they're ones that I gave it to originally that pass it on to other people, you know, pretty often. So um, I think, I'm not sure, honestly, I think pretty regularly, I would imagine. I mean, it's awesome, right? I mean, that's the whole thing, right? It lives forever, right? It's got your name yeah. on it and anybody that shares it, it's good, you know, they can see you on there and they'll call you and, they, and they'll reach out to you. So, I mean, that's the, whole, know, that's the whole intent. So um, hey, we got a couple. I'm just going to read. This is one of the um, vendor. So, yeah, yeah, I mean. So, William, you're asking about vendor lists. You're, you're welcome to add your own vendor list to the back uh, if you want to do that. Uh, that's fine. I mean, um, obviously, everybody's got their list, so you should absolutely. Like, just like Alyssa was talking about earlier, she adds information about pricing at daycares and things like that. So, you should you should absolutely consider adding additional items that you think will be helpful for your clients. So again, we, we would never, like, I can't get a list of vendors in every area in the country, nor would we want to do that. Like, and that's something you want to be able to do, and you should absolutely do that. Um, so, yeah, that's a great question. We we definitely we definitely recommend you kind of use. We kind of look at it use what we are giving you as kind of the base, and then build on it, right? Like, add things to it, add more information to it. Um, the key is just making sure that you get like the whole thing is creating the the lead, right? So, if you're going to put it on your website, have a download get a name and email, right? Like get away like just to that, hey, I can send you this, I need your email address and I can email it to you. Then you've got something you can follow up with and you've got a contact to add in. Um, and not, I'm not saying that in like a pushy way that you should immediately then try to convert them to a buyer immediately. It's just, you wanna have them to follow up because you, you know, same thing we talked about in the blogs Then you can send them blog posts and you can send them more information and you can just kind of nurture them. Um, and you never know when that person you're nurturing for a month or two just all of a sudden pops up you know, out of the, you know, out of uh, the quietness one day and just says, okay, I'm ready to talk now, right? Because everybody gets to that decision kind of differently. So I'm curious, what other marketing do you just, I mean, not outside of us, maybe just like what other marketing efforts do you kind of do, Alyssa, and what do you find to be effective and most helpful uh, for you? You know, honestly, I, um, that's one of my goals for this year is to get back. I was really heavily like on Facebook, you know, yeah. last year. And then I kind of, you know, fell into that trap of where I got so busy. I sort of like fell off of that. But I think really it's social hard. media and open, I love open houses. I know that they went away for a little bit. They're starting to come back here. We're just being safe, you know. Um, 
But I absolutely love open houses. I love LinkedIn. Um, I do think that another way that the the blog posts and the base guides and all that is helpful is that, you know, everybody's going to Google you now. So I think that, you know, Millie's built, built themselves like a good reputation that you're a solid company, you know, veteran spouses. And so like, if someone Googles you and then you're affiliated with this other military company, I mean, that all already helps you. It's kind of like free advertising, honestly. So yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. Like brand I mean, that's what we're trying to do, right? Like that's, uh, part of it, I think, the value we bring, we try to bring to you is the fact that people know who we are now. Um, you know, we had a we had an agent or an agent the other day tell us that they were using one of the the folks that they found them through us, uh, and the person's like, "Hey, we we went with you because Malie said you'd be a great agent for us." So we, that's mm-hmm. what we're here to do. We're trying to make those connections and get them connected with you guys and help you make you know those relationships so that you can better do that. Um, and then you take over, right? You you do what you do best, and that's what we know you'll do, and that's why we're comfortable once you guys get, you know, get that conversation going. So open houses are good. Um, I'm curious, like, so, yeah, social media is one that's, it's tough, right? I mean, social media, because there's so many folks on it. Um, right. I, you know, I, we've just started out, you know, just to share with some folks, we've started to do some Facebook advertising for the first time for Asian Intel, um, we're having some pretty good success. I hope, I mean, yeah. there's a few of you hopefully watching that I think saw us through Facebook ads and then we talked to you and you became members. Um, but I'll tell you, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really kind of tricky to get started. Uh, once you kind of get going and you learn how to use the systems, it's okay. But the initial startup is, is painful because, uh, you can, sp- yeah, you can spend a lot of money advertising on social media and get n- not a lot of results because the way the things are set up is you really gotta, you gotta test, uh, different ads and see what works and what doesn't work. And then, so the key is starting off small with little amounts of money and testing things and finding what works. Then when you find what works, you can kind of push more resources into that. Um, but that AB testing and creating, you know, creative ads and things is time consuming is hard. We're just still kind of wrapping our arms around it. And uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's, and the challenge is you can go out and pay companies to do it, but it's expensive to pay them too, mm-hmm. because you're going to be paying them whatever you're paying for your, you know, for your spend on the ads, you're going to probably have to double that to be able to pay the company that's doing it for you. So that's kind of the drawback. I think it was why a lot of agents don't do it. Um, but I will tell you, it can be effective though. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And I, I agree with you, Ken, 100%. Like a couple years ago, I mean, I went down that rabbit hole of like the Facebook ads, like creating the perfect audience and comparing them. And it took me like a while to figure it out. But once you can like narrow in those demographics, you know, like the easiest example is a listing. I, I had a listing that was like on the beach here that was, you know, half a million dollars. Like my audience for that. I saved that for future listings that are similar, but you wouldn't use that same Facebook targeting for, you know, a townhouse right outside of the base. So once, I mean, I lost hours of my life to Facebook advertising, but once you yeah. figure it out, you know, it's good. Yeah, you know, I would tell you the, the good thing is if you spend enough, you do get, they will help you. So like we talk, mm-hmm. you know, I, we talk, right. We have a Facebook ad rep that calls um, as part of, you know, they don't charge us extra for it. And they make recommendations to us, you know, hey, you ought to be doing this or you should change this. Um, you should be put, putting more emphasis into building your kind of audience and, and click throughs before you start trying to push free market, you know, retargeting and sales and things. And they can help you kind of with that stuff. Um, but definitely finding somebody that knows how to do it initially is probably important because it's not like just what you said, Lisa, right? You can, you can, it's, it's very, very time consuming uh, to spend all that time kind of building the creatives and doing it all. Um, and then like I said, if you don't know quite what you're doing and testing, that's where you're going to lose it. And then you're going to waste it all that time because you're not going to get the results uh, to get the campaigns out of learning phase into actual execution phase, which is what you're trying to do. So great. Right. Great the, the less people interacting with your posts, you're paying more per click. So, you know, it really is crucial to, if you're going to set a budget, you know, maximize it that way. For sure. Yeah. And then having a plan in terms of what your, what your goal is after they click, right? So, I mean, okay, great. They clicked and they're on your page, but if you don't have a page that's set up to convert them in some way, you're wasting your money too, right? So if it's just a landing real estate page, you got to have something compelling to drive them to take an action, right? Whether that's, hey, sign up here for a newsletter or, or download content that I have or something, right? Like that's the goal is to try to convert that person into a potential lead. 
you got to have something compelling to get them to take action because otherwise they'll visit your page and then they'll disappear. And then that's, you know, that what good is that done? Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's one of the, you know, interesting things. One area I've been interested in, I don't know if you've looked at it or not, but like next door is making a big play and trying to get realtors to advertise on there. I haven't looked that closely at it, but it looks like, you know, it, it could be promising, but then again, I don't know how many realtors are on there trying to do it already. So for me personally, I agree with you. And I, I thought that was going to, it might just be here in my specific market or like maybe the neighborhood where I live specifically, but it's like so oversaturated with agents already that I feel like it kind of turns people off of next door because it was initially meant to be this like safe space where you can like ask your neighbors for like real life recommendations. And even though they market as an advertisement, I think people started to feel like they didn't, they weren't there you know, for a sales pitch or to feel like they were being sold to. And that was my personal take from it. But, you know, again, I can't speak for like any other place. You know, yeah, right. no, I, I agree. It's it's kind of it's still new, and I I don't I don't have a good sense of whether or not it could be, you know, a good a good avenue for realtors to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it's it's interesting because it's one of those things where a lot of agents like you that are successful, right? You're you're probably doing a good level of business even without a lot of marketing efforts, right? So you don't have yeah. to you don't think about it as much, um, and uh, and that's fine, right? Because one of the probably the most important things anyways is the spending the time talking to your current clients and more importantly, your past clients, right? I mean, that's your best, your best marketing is still your past clients. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's to me, one of the biggest areas that I see that agents don't spend enough time is, you know, reaching out to past clients, communicating with them, helping them with things after well after the sale that are not necessarily things you have to do, but again, you're trying to keep that relationship going because someday they're going to want to sell that house or they're going to refer somebody else to you. Right. Um, and like the worst thing is when you hear these stories about agents, you know, they find out a, a client, they helped buy a home, you know, a few years later, sold the home with another agent uh, yeah. because yeah. you never, you never reached out after the sale and you never kept in touch. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, how do you, do you, like, how do you think about trying to keep in touch with, with your current, you know, your past clients? Um, this is another thing. My broker, Kenny, he, he's really good at this and he keeps us you know on top of it but honestly for me personally that comes like a little naturally to me like my i guess style of realtoring is like i i have yet to have a client that i accidentally didn't become sort of friends with you know so i i like to keep in touch with them i'm always getting baby pictures from people but you know i think like the whole buffini sort of model is brilliant i i think you know i don't strictly adhere to that or like go to the seminars or anything but like for valentine's day um Right now at Wendy's, you can get a little keychain of a Frosty for $2, and that gives you free Frosties for the whole year. So I'm about to go buy like 100 Frosty keychains and just mail them to people. Right. And, yeah. you know, the lender will split it with you. I'm sure you'll have to, you know. So I think pop by gifts and cute stuff like that, you know, is a good way to do it. doesn't take a lot, right? Like one of the things, you know, I my wife does is she gets, uh, she does pies for Thanksgiving. Uh, there's this great okay. pie shop that like it's really hard to get uh, like if you go to get a pie from them on Thanksgiving you're waiting in line for like four or five hours you know so what she does is she pre-orders them months in advance so mm-hmm. she can then she just delivers them um, I mean I deliver them with her because that's <laughs> yeah. so I get roped into it but it's actually kind of fun because I get free pie for the day and everything right. but uh but the point being is it's 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 one day right it's not a huge amount of money uh you know it's it's a Good, good chunk, but not a lot. Um, but I'm telling you, the conversation she has on that one, because I drive and she delivers the pies. Every time she does it, she she has at least five or six like really positive conversations with her past clients. Um, hey, I just got a new job. We're thinking of buying a bigger home, or you right. know, hey, you know, whatever it is, it's just like it. And it was an excuse to have a conversation that didn't involve like. Hey, I want, you know, hire me to do it. Right. So that's the whole key is like just staying in front of your clients all the time. Um, when, when there's nothing, you know, you need, you know, from them or you're asking you, you want them to do with you. You're just kind of, you're just trying to be helpful. Right. And you're just trying to stay in touch and and be their friend, right. Be, be somebody that can help them in certain situations and everything. So just stay um, relevant. That was what, yes, Bill, that was Wendy's. So go the $2 frosty. I love that idea. Uh, so just, 
and, and you had no idea, this was not planned, but like my classmate from school is actually the chief marketing officer for Wendy's. Oh, really? So Can I'm I get some free messages? Yeah, well, I'm going to send him a LinkedIn <laughs> note after and be like, hey, guess what? Some, I'm going to tell you what one of the realtors is doing. Like, that's a, he's going to love it because he's always, uh, he's he's a really good marketing guy and he's always talking about all the things Wendy's are doing. And Wendy's, Wendy's, if you haven't looked, Wendy's is a great, um, a great company to kind of go look at for good marketing ideas and in terms of how to be really authentic. Uh, right. I mean, there's so many places like them, but one of the things I love about Wendy's, if you've ever gone and looked at their Twitter, their Twitter mm -hmm. is hilarious. Like yeah. they are like, they're snarky and they like get a little Twitter spats with people and people are like, why would you do that? That's because it gives them a personality, right? Like they, there's no right. person and people talk about it. Right. And, and so, you know, marketing doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be boring. It can be, you know, it, it should reflect who you are and who you're trying to, you know, per, you want people to perceive you as. So have fun with it. Like you can differentiate yourself um, in fun ways, um, you know, and not alienate people, but at least, you know, it makes you more interesting. Um, and I love it. Like $2 Frosty. That's great. Yeah, it's yeah. A good. Um, oh, it looks like it, it expired January 31st. So you must have got it. Dang it. I guess I'm not going to buy Frosty keychains. Oh, maybe guys. not. Okay. I'm going to send it. Maybe we'll get them to extend it. That's Next great year. Idea. Next, where's um, my? He's also asking, um, do you do single base guides social ads? Uh, I don't know if you've actually used our guides for social ads, have you? I have not. Not for uh, I, ads. Yeah, it's something you could probably try to do, uh, Bill. You could probably try to. You could do it, and then you could create a link and, and create a download. Uh, that might be a good way to kind of do that. I don't think that's a, a bad idea. We haven't seen it. Um, LinkedIn is a, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I would suggest, like, if you're going to do that, maybe, like, and Ken, I'm sure you saw this, but, like, uh, videos, and if it's not a video, like, slideshows are going to be higher up yeah. on, like, the Facebook and yeah. Instagram algorithm. So I wouldn't put, like, all, like, 10 pages of one, but, like, maybe a snapshot of, like, you know, a couple pages of it and have a little slideshow. We'll probably so one of the tricks we learned is, like, we have videos that are just, the video is, it's not a video it's just it's a static image but it's right. a static image loaded in a video format mm -hmm. because videos yeah. get more views and they get more click throughs so that's a yeah. great point videos are the way to go um yeah if you get you know and, and and they don't have to like i said they don't have to be an actual video it can just be a static image in a video right. um that definitely works you know in terms of linkedin um i, I will tell you that the challenge of linkedin is it's much more of a professional uh, platform than a social platform. And so mm -hmm. I find that I'm less receptive to people marketing me on LinkedIn uh, mm -hmm. than I am on Facebook, right? Because Facebook, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll look at an ad to buy a product because I'm usually on there because it's my free time. It's my social time. Mm -hmm. It's my, but when I'm on LinkedIn, it's like I'm making professional connections and I'm doing like kind of business. So I, I, I gotta tell you, I personally, I don't react well to kind of the spamming and the, and the messaging on link or on LinkedIn as much. Uh, I, I feel like it's, it, it's a professional platform and it, it, it's not as effective in that way. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've you had know, any experience with it, but. I'm inclined to agree with you. I think the value of LinkedIn and I tag you guys and use your hashtag and stuff on there sometimes. And I really think that I, I really agree with you. I, I feel like I don't like it when someone's trying to sell something to me on LinkedIn, but. I feel like if someone Googles you, if they're looking at a few agents and then, you know, they're see your LinkedIn, I think the value there is like being affiliated with a reputable group of people and yeah. company that's military based. I, yeah, I should add, that's a great point. Like your profile is very important, right? Because yeah. LinkedIn profiles are where people go to see who you really are and to verify yeah. that you are who you say you are. So having a good, solid LinkedIn profile is important. Um, I, yeah, I, I think I, I think I'm with you. Like, but but the, the marketing on LinkedIn I think is less uh, is going to be less effective. Um, you know, because yeah. it, it can work, but you got to be careful with it. Because like I said, most people see it as kind of spammy. Um, yeah. And not as effective. So hey, just to, we got about 15 minutes left. So I want to be respectful of Alyssa's time, everybody else. But we're talking with Alyssa Ray today. For those of you that don't know her, she's a an agent, military spouse agent down in. Uh, Virginia Beach, uh, Hampton Roads area. So I've been using Agent Intel for a couple years now. It uses their guides, like I said, very effectively in our marketing, um, which is what I tell you all when I'm when talking to you all about it. But I wanted you to get it from the perspective of an agent that's actually using the content um, and 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 sharing her perspectives on that. So um, what else? I mean, just we got a few minutes left. So what's, what else is kind of going on that you're seeing, you know, in the market or just you know. 
interesting trends you're seeing or I'm just you know it's always I think it's always interesting for folks to hear from folks in different markets in terms of what they're yeah. seeing and, and what's interesting well it's funny that you say that because that our we call it family meeting but like my brokerage meeting every Wednesday um someone said this week and I hadn't really heard or considered this before but when I first started as an agent it was the norm that with a full price offer um or a very strong offer you know it was the industry standard that the seller paid closing costs, especially with the VA loan. And that has gone pretty much out the window, you know, right. for sure with how competitive things went. But someone just told me, well, we were the last market still doing that. I had no idea. You know, I just thought that was like all around the world, how everyone was living. But yeah. um, we finally caught up that way, I guess. Fascinating. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening right now, um, you know, in terms of, who's paying what, um, probably many of you are tracking that there's a big lawsuit that's going on right now too, in terms of commissions uh, and whether or not that, how that's gonna impact commissions. So I was just reading about that today. So just a few things, I mean, cause uh, you know, again, I don't like to do the scare agents cause you know, you can't, you can over focus on these things, but it is important to understand what's happening, which is there are lawsuits that, you know, they wanna make it more uh, transparent in terms of like the fees, right? Because right now buyers agents, you know, technically you you could say, well, I'm I'm not I'm working for free because I'm getting paid by the seller, right? Because the seller's paying it. But in reality, like you are you are you're not working for free, right? You are getting so your disclosures are going to become more important. Um, the the ability to uh, you know lower and 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 give back portions of commissions is going to be getting easier. There's lawsuits going on. There's still about seven states where you can't give rebates. Uh, and those states are facing lawsuits as to why you can't do that uh, to consumers. So I'm just saying there's a lot of things that are going to go on out there. They're not going to have an impact like immediately, but there are some trends that are happening kind of long term um, that we'll kind of keep keep abreast of and keep sharing with you guys. Um, so, you know, some of it's military related. Some of it's just real estate stuff that's happening. That yeah. Make sure you're aware of. I don't know uh, if you guys, is it, I don't know if this is specific to Virginia, honestly, but there's this amazing like that first time buyer like VHCA grant right now that you can combine with your VA loan. VA oh, loan. That's good. Yeah, that I, I, I'm not aware of that. Like, what can you tell a little bit to everybody about it? Or just what it. you? Yeah. Yeah. So what I know, and first of all, the main thing I know is to give them Carrie my lender's cell phone number and have her explain it. But the way that it, <laughs> I don't, you know, works is like. If you're a first time buyer, there's a grant available. If you qualify, we all know, you know, debt to income ratio affects it, like all kinds of things. But um, I've had several people this last year use it and you can combine it with your VA loan. And the reason it's amazing because they get a grant for 2% of the purchase price of the home. And we all know closing costs are, you know, usually roughly 3%. So for a VA buyer that tends to be, have less cash up front, it, allowing them to be competitive in this market and buy a house when maybe they couldn't before because you know you're writing your offer like that grant doesn't go on there you just don't have to ask for closing cost assistance you know it doesn't matter where you're coming from yeah so, so that's, a, that's a good point check that out if you're obviously if you're in virginia especially but like see if other states are offering that as well because that's a that's a really i had not heard that so that's a really awesome you know, it's crazy. Because, like I had had a few people this year come to me with like Bank of America pre-approvals or like Navy Federal. And a lot of the loan officers didn't even know it existed. But I mean, I've had several clients use it. I have a couple of people right now using it. So it's a great resource. I'm not sure if it's everywhere. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, anything you can do to help your clients, obviously, right? That's a great and and, yeah. uh, and little things like that. Because um, there's it, that means, that, you know, if the loan officers and folks aren't even aware of it, that certainly means that buyers don't have any clue about it, right? They're not going to know that something like that exists. They're going to they're going to come to you for that stuff. So we'll keep try to keep you guys posted on things like that as well. Sorry, I'm looking over there because we got another comment. I think I'm going to look. Um, so I have like two computers going on. I'm trying to keep everything straight. Kelly, hopefully Kelly's watching and I'm doing okay in her opinion. Um, <laughs> Kelly's going to she'll have some great comments for me after it's all done. Um, but let me look. I'm, I keep hearing a little pop, but I'm not seeing any. Uh, I'm not seeing any comments. So anything else that's happening, like you're seeing out there too? I mean, I'm sure there's probably other trends, or just, just in general. Like uh, uh, one thing I've heard, um, which is kind of interesting, is um, there's been some issues with VA appraisers uh, in some markets. Have you seen anything with that? Like problems with getting VA VA appraisers, either getting them out to the properties, but then not appraising 
for what purchase prices are coming in under purchase prices? So I always call that getting tide watered again. I don't know if that's like specific to here or everywhere, but here, if your VA appraisal doesn't meet value, if the appraiser can't justify value, you get what's called a tide water notification. And it's like this grid and it's up to the agents, hopefully if they're being respectful and team working it like they should to like give comps in this very specific way to help him justify the value. Um, that's happened to me before, but honestly, we have such low inventory right now that like it's not really much of an issue. Everything's appraising. I, I haven't run into you know personally. That's good. No, I talked to. I think it was, uh, and she, I don't think she's watching right now. But Sandy Payne down at Florida Hood was telling us that's been a problem in Queen. It's just appraisals not coming in at purchase prices. Uh, you know, and that can be for several reasons. One could just be the market's appreciating faster than the appraisers can keep up with it. Um, you know, it could be just appraisers, you know, it could be appraisers not kind of doing things properly too. There's going to be a lot of things to that. Um, right. but it's, you know, interesting, I was talking, my wife and I were talking about that today. And, you know, one thing that always to keep in mind too, is if you're in a super competitive market, uh, where home prices are really expensive and things, um, you, you know, you can't ever waive a VA appraiser appraisal, excuse me, um, right. that has to be done for a VA loan. But you can, there's nothing to prevent you from paying, the buyer from paying the difference between the appraisal and the purchase price. Uh, We're seeing so if you're, that right, now. right? I mean, you can do that. That's awesome. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's more money you're going to come to the table with. But the point is, like, we're in a market here in North Virginia where it, that's not uncommon, right? Where homes mm -hmm. are going to go above uh, appraised value because there's just a shortage of homes and a lot of buyers that want them. And so you you can you can do that. You can put that in the contract. Say we agreed to pay above the appraisal price, um, whatever that happens to be. And then um, you know hopefully it does, you don't have to do that if it comes in at appraised you know at the purchase price. Appraised value is great, but um, yeah. those you know techniques you can still use right if you have to do that. So I think that's smart and like an important distinction too because I think you know if everyone's running comps and like being responsible and not outrageous. Like, you know, the listing agent's running them, the buyer's agent should be running them before writing. An appraisal, in most situations, if it's off, it's not gonna be off by insane amounts, usually, in my personal experience. But what you just said, I think, you know, the smarter thing for everyone is to guarantee an amount over the appraised value. Like, oh, we'll pay $5,000 over whatever it appraises for, instead of trying to offer 10 grand over the ask price. That's when you get in trouble. It's like everybody's, pricing things at the top of the market because you know we can and then if some and then if you're accepting an offer that can bring it over i mean yeah it's not going to appraise you know you got to yeah. just be realistic you know yeah no, that's a good one. hey so we got a couple minutes left uh so share with a group like what are your kind of what are your goals for i'm putting you a little bit on the spot but okay. like, what are your goals for this year what are you trying to hopefully you're going to achieve as an agent uh and I, i'll give you a second to think about it the reason i'm asking a list of this is because i think for all of us out there, right? Like we're always trying to set goals and, 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 and remember goals are aspirational, right? That we're shooting for, we might not get to them, but the point is like something that we are have to work for. So like, what are, what are some things you're trying to accomplish, you know, this year? So my broker's been asking me the same question and we right. just talked about it. And honestly, my goals, I am really proud of the year that I had last year. And I, I mean, it was just a really big year for me. That's the most real estate I've ever sold. But I didn't do a great job of like balancing my personal life and work life. And I was, you know, working insane amounts of hours. And, you know, even with a great team and a transaction coordinator and all of this, I mean, I just, you know, long story short, my goal this year is to like still be a successful real estate agent, but to like hike more and like do more family stuff and yeah. like not drive myself crazy. Um, and I think that that's just a learning curve. You know, this was the busiest I've ever been. I was so excited to be that busy and, you know, so emotionally invested in every deal. But I think there's obviously, I'm learning ways to do that. You know, it's okay to not answer a call at 11 p.m. You know, that's something that I was really bad about. So. I, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because like, uh, you know, again, I always tell folks, I live this, right? I, I have uh, I have my agent is right upstairs right now and she's on the phone with the client. I can hear her in the background. Yeah. Um, and she, right, has the same challenges, right? Balancing work and personal life because as an agent, right, it all kind of runs together a lot of times. Right. Uh, and it's hard to say, right, it's hard to say no to a client. It's hard to say to a client, mm -hmm. I'll call you tomorrow or I will return your email. Right. 
you know, when I can return it um, and not, you know, and, and so many clients expect you to do it right now. I mean, she had, she, she was telling me the other day, she was getting like, the one client was texting her, she got like 26 text messages asking like things that were like a paragraph long. Um, and so, it, but it's hard, it's hard, right? It's hard on you personally because you want to be responsive. You want to be that person, mm -hmm. but, but you deserve to have time for yourself and your personal life too, right? Like it's okay because the thing I always tell folks is if you're not taking that time to do that, you're not going to be the best agent or the yeah. best whatever you want to be if you don't take time to refill that gas tank and reset yourself right. once in a while. So it is okay to have your own time, right? To say, hey, I'm not going to touch my phone for two hours. I'm going to sit down at dinner right. with my family or I'm going to, you know, like go jump on the Peloton or go out and hike or do whatever it is you like to do to get yourself reset. That's, that's fine. Like you're not, you're not cheating anybody. Uh, you're right. paying yourself and you're getting yourself better set up for when the next time you do talk to that client and you're going to be more refreshed and ready to handle them. So I think that's an awesome point. So my broker, we have a really awesome podcast. It's called Real Estate Happens. And honestly, I'm on it sometimes, but he's hilarious. You know, don't tell him I said that, but he's like funny. And he, one of the, his ideas for a podcast is like to have the spouses on and like, what is it like to be married to a real estate agent? And we were like saying this while we're all like hanging out, having a couple of drinks at like a family dinner and one of the spouses had some thoughts and like it would, but it was really funny and like all in good, you know, good humor, but it's, it's so true. And I mean, I think, again, I think sales, we tend to be like a certain personality type. I know I am myself and you know, I love this job, so it's hard not, it's hard to put it down sometimes, but what Kenny, my broker, has taught me, one of the very first things he ever told me was, like, girl, you got to chill, you know, there's no such thing as a real estate emergency, you know, leave a house being on fire, you know, maybe, but like, so I think that this year, to go back to what you said is, you know, I know that I can still give as good of service, but like, you got to like, have some separation at some point too. No, it's, it's such a, it, 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 I, I know it's said a lot by a lot of folks, but it's always worth reemphasizing again and again uh, that you, you, you deserve to take the time and, and take time. Um, you know, Kelly's going to laugh at me right now, but I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I just got into Peloton like this in the last month, we finally gave in and got the bike and stuff. And I was kind of like, eh, you know, I, we'll see. And then I got on, and, and and for those of you who don't know Peloton, like there's all these different instructors, and you kind of gravitate towards the ones you like. You know, some are more motivational than others, some are more technical than others. Um, and so I asked Kelly because Kelly's been doing it for a while. I said, "Hey, get you know," and she's like, "Oh, try these." You know, first, so I tried this one. Her name's Christine uh, D. Nicole. I can't pronounce her last name, but uh, she's like, a, she's uh, about my age, and she is a competitive cyclist, like rides in the tracks and stuff. And like I got on there in the first ride from her and she dropped like three F bombs on the ride. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> like I thought it was the greatest thing ever. I mean um, right. And the, and the point is like what I love about doing that now is like I I like you can do little things. The one technique I would tell folks is, you know, schedule it so that your day doesn't start until like you've had a chance to maybe do those things. So like one of the things I really push for is I try not to have any I don't like to do phone calls or video calls or anything before 10 a.m. Um, and the reason for that is it gives me the morning to, I get up really early. I get up at like five. I, I go down and work on my computer for an hour or so and, you know, have coffee and kind of wake up and stuff. But then that gives me time from about seven until like nine or 10 to work out, you know, shower, do a few more emails and stuff. And, and the point being is I don't, I, I don't have to interact with anybody until then. So it gives me some time for myself you can do that, right? You can say to folks, hey, I'm going to start at nine or 10 or whatever that time is. And I think what's happened for a lot of agents is it's gotten worse now because of COVID, you're working from home a lot more. So the two things have collided even more. So you, you're actually not going to the office, right? So you're actually feel like you can do, and you got to set the boundaries even more. So, so just, I, you know, I tell folks, it's, it's a hard thing to try to get through sometimes, like when you're, we're talking about what we're talking about. So start with something small, right? Just like, blocking off time or, or doing and then just build on it from there but like figure out how, whatever that thing is that you need and try to just set aside some time to do it so yeah. so such a valuable thing I, i'm glad to, and, I, and that's kind of what i want to end that on because that that's a great i think lesson uh for folks to take so let's say hey thank you so much for coming on uh as always we love chatting with you uh so everybody out there um you know thanks for joining us a lot of you're going to be watching this after the fact so 
Um, still post questions, you know, I'll go in and answer them later, but if you got questions for us, let us know. Um, but it's, it was really great to chat with you, and I'm, I'm yeah. sure a lot of the agents out there are going to get some uh, value out of, uh, uh, you know, hearing yeah. from you and, and how you've, you know, done so, so all. it's just great. It's great watching somebody who's starting in real estate and just like exploding out of the gate and all the things they're doing. It's wonderful to kind of see how they are progressing and doing that. Um, and it's just great to see somebody who's like a brand new agent just a few years ago now, just like, kill so for all of you out there that are new too, like, this is what you can be in a few years. Right? It's attainable. It's a goal you can get to uh, with a lot of work. So, so thanks again. And everybody, thanks. And we'll be uh, touching base with you soon. So see you later. Bye, guys.